Hello everyone, this is Fox Promise Murph for FPS Gamer for short, and today we're building my wife computer. I mentioned how Hackintosh was the project we wanted to undertake because she really likes the interface of a Mac, and we don't really want to spend the money to buy a system with the specifications that she needs. Uh, so today we're building Hackintosh. So let's kick things off with the CPU. The processor that we decided on is an Intel i7-6700K, the K of course meaning that it can be overclocked above its 4.0 GHz native speed. And my wife does a lot of photo editing and so a decent processor was definitely a must. But of course this CPU, and especially if it's overclocked, is going to put off a lot of heat and we need something to keep it cool. That's where this Cryorig R1 Universal Cooler comes in. Now the R1 is renowned as a really amazing air cooler. They really don't get any more high performance than this uh, without going over into the realm of water cooling. And not to mention the styling on this uh, air cooler is amazing. It looks incredible. And that's gonna mount directly here on this motherboard. And the motherboard, when it comes to a Hackintosh, you don't have a whole lot of choices. There's only a, a small number of motherboards that are compatible. This was a nice motherboard because it has a lot of features, but it also goes with the black and white style that the rest of the components are going to follow. And uh, personally, I'm a fan of MSI, so the mortar was kind of an obvious choice. The RAM, of course, are these four sticks of Ballistic Sport. Uh, this is a very popular RAM, especially among white builds, because it, it's fast, it's 2400 megahertz, which is decently fast, uh, and it's inexpensive. These were not very expensive RAM kits, and they look pretty great. Now let's move on to the graphics card. This is an Asus Strix GTX 970. It was the card that was previously in my machine until I got my 1060. Uh, it's nice to know that she has a headroom if she ever wants to uh, get into PC gaming. Now for her programs and this Apple operating system, we got her this 240 gig solid state drive by OCZ, which of course the parent company is Toshiba, so there's uh, a good amount of reliability in this drive. I don't have any worries about it functioning, and it, of course it also goes with the, uh, the theme that we have going on here. Now something we don't see in a lot of modern computers is the inclusion of an optical drive. My wife really would only need this for the occasions where she burns discs for some of her clients, and of course she needs to be able to connect to the internet, so I have this very high-end wireless dual band card, and it can support up to 1.3 gigabytes per second, which is pretty crazy. And then of course to power all of this is this power supply by NZXT, a company more known for their cases. Uh, this power supply I chose for A, the price, B, the wattage, 550 watts is pretty much perfect. It's durability, they're, they're a proven brand. I have the utmost faith that this is going to be a functioning power supply for a long time to come. And it's white, which goes great with the style of the machine. And of course to give it a little bit of bling, we're adding these Thermaltake Lumacolor 256C magnetic LED strips and this includes the controller pack where you can choose from different colors patterns or presets and three strips that you can put throughout your case so it'll make her case stand out a little bit more and of course the case itself i did a whole review on this case if you want to see it, it's in the description below amazing case it looks fantastic uh, and I'm just very excited to build in it. I think with accumulation of these parts, we should be more than capable of creating her a fantastic machine for the price. All right, so first things first, um, there's no real specific order this needs to go in, but there's an order you can go in to make it easier on yourself. Um, so before we get started, I should probably inform you guys that I am not allowed to touch anything. I'm going to be here to kind of guide her, but I'm not going to touch anything, or at least I'm going to try not to touch anything. <laughs> All right. All right, so yeah, go ahead and take out the motherboard. It's in this uh, static proof casing. I'm oh, not touching. Sorry, not touching. Your CPU is going to go first, and it's right here. Yeah, no, you should be able to just pull that little arm off. Yep, and lift it up. It's going to rest on that, and there's a little arrow. That's it, right there in the corner. Okay. So it's on the plastic bit. So yeah, go ahead and lift it up and match that arrow. There you go. Okay, yeah, so go ahead and drop that down underneath that screw. And then you take a spearman of force and then stick it underneath the little... Perfect. ta -da. Yeah, she has no fear. Okay. <laughs> that is the CPU. Next is going to be the RAM. 16 gigs in that package, 16 gigs in that one. That's 32 total. Uh, this should be more than enough. Here, just start with those two first. There's a little slit in the bottom of the RAM. You want to line that up. You'll know which way it goes. But first, open up these little tabs. Yeah, exactly. And again, this takes an uncomfortable amount of force. Just for you. <laughs> 
perfect. Good. This portion of the motherboard is pretty much done. Push the case down onto its back. So inside there you're going to find the I.O. shield. So you go inside the case and have that pointing out. So have it sticking out right through here in this space. Perfect. There you go. Now you'll see inside there's a bunch of what are called standoffs. They're these little rusting screws. No, you set them right on there, but you turn that 90 degrees. Yeah, then drop that in and it'll make it easier now for, for you because you can actually line these holes up in the I.O. shield. So the screws that are going to go on these standoffs, uh, yeah, they're going to be in there. Finally here. I was worried we wouldn't get the hard drives in time, but they actually just arrived. Are you sure it's these Yeah, so it's those uh, bigger ones. Nice. Another board is nice and secure. Another thing I just thought of is this fan uh, was in my case that I purchased. I replaced them with a bunch of Corsair uh, AF140s. Um, so you might as well put it in here. It's white actually too, which is nice. It goes with the aesthetic a little bit. I think we'll mount it right up there on top. These fans are gonna blow in the direction of the logo. So if you want air to come out of the case, then you're gonna wanna mount it pretty much exactly as it's oriented right now. Perfect. And it's we neglected to put the CPU cooler on before mounting the motherboard. I'm sure some of you were yelling at your computer screens, but this case conveniently has a cutout in the back, and there are some people who prefer to do it this way. Now, I'm fairly confident this cooler is going to fit. I mean, I looked it up online, obviously, before I purchased it. It is just huge. It's actually a very uh, pleasant unboxing experience for just a cooler. Yeah, see, it's not that big. It's a snug fit, and it's probably gonna be a snug fit in there. Wow, that is <laughs> Are you actually oohing and eyeing, or is that for my benefit? Pretty insane. Uh, overkill much? I don't think the orientation matters on there. Yeah, nice and tight, because this boy is heavy. And the next thing you're going to need to do this is a registration card. And the next thing you're going to do is yeah. get your grubby fingerprints off the CPU. Is it because I called them grubby? <laughs> Now you need a little thermal paste. It's not as kinky as it sounds. This is their special CP9, you know, don't swallow it. The, the, re the way this works is the heat comes off that CPU, a lot of heat, and it goes to the bottom of this right here. So you use this, a little bit of a putty in between so they make full contact. So what you want to do is get like a pea-sized amount. Perfect. That's good. We thought we were screwed because this is our, I know, don't laugh, this is like our biggest screwdriver. That ain't gonna work because once it's on there, you gotta be able to push this all the way down and connect. But guess what? When you buy a premium product, boom, I'm saving this. This is now my longest screwdriver. Okay. Yeah. Just straight down? Straight down. Try to get it as straight as you can because you don't want to move it around once it's connected with the thermal paste. Is that pretty tight? Mm -hmm. Nice. Get a nice little wiggle. Ooh. Yeah. Now this should already be easy to open. This was the one that was in my machine. Now I was going to paint this white, but uh, none of that red or anything shows. The only thing that actually shows is this part here. And this is kind of a black and white build, so I figured it was more trouble than it was worth. Go ahead and what you're gonna do is, it's very similar to the RAM. You're gonna open that little door right there. Down. Uh, down. There you go. Snap it right into place. Line those up with the shield back here. You good? Nice. Okay, so we also have this TP Link uh, wireless card that sticks out the back. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. No <laughs> drop screws. You, you didn't see it, but off camera she dropped the screw in there like three times. Okay, and then I did it once too. Not that I was helping. <clears throat> <clears throat> so here's the problem we're running into, guys. If you listen carefully, you hear that? These are so close together that this card sagging a little bit is actually making, the fan is making contact with uh, that wireless card, which of course is not good. So I think what we're gonna do, this case comes with this uh, plate right here, but I think what we might do is attach something to it that will prop up, if you look, it's kind of angled down. If we prop up this card so it's more flat, then uh, it gets the fan out of the way. 
this is what we came up with. We have you know, a screw on that side and a standoff on that side and a PCIe bracket. Uh, that should hopefully prop it up just enough to keep it from uh, hitting that network card underneath. Okay, so this is the solid state drive. This is where the operating system is gonna live. 240 gigs, OCZ. This, yeah. We wanted to show it off, but I don't see anywhere in this case where you actually mount your SSD. There's the SSD, we'll do the hard drives next. So, but it has these two caddies, which is perfect because we have two hard drives and these don't use any screws at all. They have little wings that pop open. These things? Yeah, they open. Them. No, yeah. these things, okay. I was pulling on this, I'm like, that doesn't yeah. make any sense. Then you pop the drive in, then you close them. Okay. Super easy. Uh, flip it around the other way. Do you want to be able to plug those in from behind? And pull the other one out and do the same thing. Very nice. Power supply, I think, is it. Power supply, and then we start wiring everything. Nice quality. Again, this uh, dry, this uh, power supply wasn't very inexpensive, but as you can see, it's white. White, because this case has a little window where you can see the power supply. Did it have to be white? No. But uh, it's got a warranty, 550 watts. That's more than enough what she needs. Fully modular, which is cool. She just realized something. Um, this does have an optical drive. And interestingly enough, it sticks out the back of the case. So we have to move the fan. And honestly, we could put the fan up at the front, but I'm afraid it would cause too much turbulence. So I guess it will go back in my uh, my extra parts bin for the time being. This is the cradle. Would not fit there if there was a fan in the way. All the wiring for the motherboard is all connected. So now it's time to plug in the power supply. All right, cable management is basically done. Gonna tie up some loose ends. Uh, put the case back together and then see if she starts up. So here we go. Uh, the build is complete um, It turned out really really slick looking the window showing some cooler details of the build that CPU cooler is Obviously the star of the show and anyway the we installed OS uh, Sierra and uh, that was a bit of a time-consuming process, and that, that part I did as well. I didn't really expect my wife to, to handle that. On this page here, I priced out a Mac Pro with similar specs, uh, and as you can see, it's nearing the $4,000 range. Now, <clears throat> I'm not dogging on Apple at all. They make amazing products. They have a very, very nice build quality. The operating system is preferred by a lot of people that like the simplistic design, but honestly, they're they're just too expensive for the performance that you're getting, uh, and that's why there is such a large community behind these Hackintosh builds because you can get so much more performance by building it yourself. Now, some of you may want to create a Hackintosh of your own, and the steps to do that are relatively simple, but they need to be followed to a T in order to function correctly. First and foremost, you need to build your machine, and not just any parts are going to work. It's not like building a PC where they need to physically be compatible with one another. They need to also be compatible with the operating system. Thankfully, the number one resource that I used in order to build my machine was TonyMacX86.com. And on that site, you'll find a complete database of all parts that will be compatible with OS Sierra. So when your build is complete and you're certain that all the parts inside are going to be compatible, you can then download the operating system. Now to do this, you're going to need two things. You're going to need an existing Macintosh, either a MacBook, MacBook Pro or a desktop, and you're also going to need a USB thumb drive. And on that thumb drive, you're going to install two things, OS Sierra, and secondly, Unibeast, which is a third-party tool that's going to allow you to run Mac OS natively on your machine. Once you have the operating system and that third-party tool on the thumb drive, retrieve it from the device and then plug it into your new machine. You should be able to press F11 or F12, whatever it is for your motherboard to get to the screen where you select the hard drive you're going to boot from. And obviously you're going to select the thumb drive that you just recently installed. Now Unibeast is going to walk you through step-by-step step the installation process. What you may want to do is have a secondary machine next to you with the specifications of your motherboard up on screen. Those specifications, namely the drivers you're going to need, uh, need to be input in a certain stage in the installation process. For example, it's going to ask you for the audio driver, the network driver, and a myriad of other drivers that you are going to need to identify and install. And you're only going to know that information if you have the product page open uh, and you're able to read it off there directly. Now this step is very important because things aren't going to function correctly if you try to run alternative drivers on a motherboard that doesn't support them. Once it is booted up and you're at the desktop and you've gone through all the 
the installation and the specifications and whatever other windows that pop up on the screen. Once it's completely clean of that, you're then going to navigate to Safari or whatever web browser you choose to use, and you're going to find MultiBeast. And MultiBeast is a separate third-party tool. It's not UniBeast, it's one you run on your new machine once it's booted up for the first time. And that's what's going to allow the operating system to stick. Now for some of you, that may be it, you may be done there. For others that have a newer graphics card like what we have here, you're going to need to install uh, a driver for your graphics card. Now, there is no current Mac product that uses a nine series graphics card. There is no driver and there's no first party support for it, which is unfortunate. However, there are existing drivers for previous iterations of uh, NVIDIA graphics cards that work fine. And once that installation is complete, you restart your computer, it's going to display the multi-beast boot menu. Uh, you can either wait the three seconds for it to select the OS Sierra bootable drive, or you can just hit enter and select it yourself. And that's it. The links to everything I mentioned here are in the description below. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. We are still thinking of a name for this computer, so if you think of something creative, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below and maybe we'll use it. An impediment that we ran into, and we ran into a couple, uh, was the Wi-Fi card for this machine. That's probably the biggest problem we had. Uh, we had some issues with clearance. The fans on the GPU were actually hitting uh, the board of this network card. And we did come up with a solution that was to take the PCI brackets and screw them into the, not the panel, but there's a, a little metal plate inside there to kind of prop up the graphics card because we thought it was the sag of the graphics card that was causing that. But it actually needed to be pushed up higher than I was comfortable with. I didn't want to bend anything or break that slot. That would really suck. So unfortunately we had to remove uh, this network card, which is unfortunate because this was about 60 bucks and I mean I got it on sale but still uh, it's unfortunate and of course I bought this like three months ago so there's no way I can return it um, so I'm gonna be saving this for a future build of some sort also you aren't going to want to download any updates to OS Sierra immediately you don't know if that new update is going to break your system you may want to wait a couple of weeks make sure that you know everything works okay and that people with similar specifications to your machine aren't encountering any problems well thank you guys for tuning in if you appreciated this video go ahead and leave it a thumbs up uh, don't forget to comment below if you have any suggestions for future videos uh, or if you come up with a clever name for this machine share this video with anyone else who may be considering building a machine of their own I'll do a follow-up video, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see that and also any potential future builds that may be coming. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.